Hello and welcome back to me attempting to rebuild this boat which I intend to sail across oceans and in last week's video I was installing such a major part of the boat and that is this mast beam on which the mast will sit and there was a lot of comments in that video some suggesting that I'm winging it and that I don't know what I'm doing which is partly true but I thought I'd start this video at least uh, with a little bit of context as to why I've done it that way a lot of the concern was about the locating blocks for this beam which I lag screwed in to the beam a lot of people were suggesting to through bolt them uh, or use uh, metal plates however a few months ago Hannah Cabone who was the co-designer along with James Warham of this boat she's spent so much time with these boats sailed many of them to Iceland further afield her boat is a Pahi 63 when she came we discussed how I would mount this beam and that was to like screw those locating blocks uh, essentially what those blocks do is just locate the beam there isn't a tremendous amount of force on them. But having said that, there was a few things that I could have done differently. So thank you so much for the comments, constructive advice, because I am tackling such a big project with such little experience. I really appreciate the comments, the advice. It's been helping me a lot. The only thing I've done differently to the plans is I've just lengthened it and it's a much larger beam. I did it oversized because my mast is also a little bit heavier than what is kind of prescribed in the plan. That's kind of my thinking behind it. Uh, in this week's video, continuing with the beam, although there is some more building to do, which I'll get into later in the video. So I'm then moving on to building up the engine boxes while I get everything that I need uh, for my sails, for my rigging and all that sort of stuff. So thanks so much for watching and I really, really hope you enjoy the video. So I got this little 90 degree machine. I also specially bought a drill like this as well. But this was 39 euros, so uh, it was pretty cheap considering the price of my Makita one. <laughs> but yeah, it just feels a bit janky. It doesn't, I don't know. I mean, it's gonna be better than my eye, but it's a bit janky. I really can't mess this up. It has to be right the first time. So fingers crossed. So to go all the way through and to go through the supporting block which I put on yesterday I've got a super long drill bit which looks like a helter skelter because that little 90 degree oh, hopefully it's a good 90 degree because I've got that as a guide I'll just put this on my new fancy drill and uh, hopefully get a nice 90 degree through it if not I'll just insert this into the hole and then put the crappy pillar drill on it Proper wobbly. Still proper wobbly. How a drill bit can get you listening back to uh, Beatles' White Album. Oh, such an incredible album. Good. 
It's a 12 mil drilled hole, good for a 10 mil bar. Obviously there's a little bit of play. I wouldn't mind a little bit of play to be honest. Time to test out these hacksaw blades that my dad was so fond of. Let's see if they live up to the hype. They are very good. If anyone's interested, these Lennox ones. Yeah, I've, I've got the drawings actually of the of the steering system with the drum and everything. I'm just I'm the, the TP38 ones, haven't you? Yeah, I think it's all on there. Got off the phone from Hanukkah last night. She told me loads of useful stuff. Basically, I need to get my sails first or see what sail shape the main sail is to to determine whether I need to put the mast at an angle or not. So, I'm putting this to one side. Oh, and another problem as well. <coughs> the base of the mast step is actually rounded. It's kind of curved. So, oh, I need to make sure it doesn't wobble. There's a lot of wobble in it right now. So, there's gonna be some more building going on there. Anyway, now I'm gonna turn my attention to the engine boxes, the engine mounts. I'm basically, yeah, I'm basically, I can't speak today. I'm gonna to duplicate what my dad did on the forward beam and do that on the beam to the back of it. I can potentially mount the aft engine. <laughs> so on the forward, eh? So we've already got these clamps on the forward beam, which is out of frame, but I'm gonna do this on the aft beam and these supports are gonna support the back end of the engine box and also have a strut across so I can put a fuel tank on there and then potentially potentially I can use that wood which is going to protect the beam to mount a winch somehow a lot of people have mentioned things such as putting spacers on the studded bar and using nylock nuts and loctite which is something that we're going to do this was just the first dry fit I have some leftover steel I've ordered some more it's not cheap stuff, it's uh, 316 proper good stuff this, so I'll just cut up what I already have, 
and uh, crack up. How do you like those apples? <laughs> The end of my drill is not cutting anymore. I think it's been destroyed by the stainless. <laughs> Feels nice to be working on something new. Uh, I probably need to get some more drill bits. Yeah. What's that? That's the turn. a lot of these drill bits the kind of the cutting edge is burnt off this one also this is how it should look nice and sharp on that corner but this steel is really hard stuff I guess uh, going slower and using more lube will stop this So I'm just doing the best that I can to work when it's not raining and when it's not dark. Um, but it's raining a lot lately and it's getting dark a little bit sooner. But I am absolutely blessed that uh, I have every day pretty much to work. I mean, I have two days for editing and uh, if I socialise then that's another day. So like four days a week. So uh, four rainy days a week. It's okay. It's alright. Still living the dream. <laughs> I got some stainless steel sleeving for the studded bar. A lot of people mentioned it, so I'm going to make spaces also for inside the stainless steel profile just to stop it from compressing. And yeah, I just need to cut up well, something like 40 different sections from this. This isn't uh, 316 stainless steel, this is only 304. Uh, should be alright though. Still a lot more cutting to do. Gonna get the rest of the stainless tomorrow delivered. Need to get some wood. And then yeah, I've pretty much got everything to get everything sorted. So, good productive day, bit of work.
bit of shopping now to settle. It's uh, pretty manageable temperatures really, it's just the rain. Uh, it's about 12 degrees during the day, I think at night it goes down to 5 or 6, but my whole hull is uh, insulated, so it's pretty warm inside, uh, especially after cooking my steak in bed. So I've just received the rest of the steel that I need to finish the uh, back bit of the engine boxes. And uh, I actually, for this profile, I could only find uh, 304 uh, stainless steel, but it looks exactly the same. So this is apparently 316, but this is the 316 that my dad got, and it looks slightly different. These two look the same, one's 316, one's 304, I don't know. Some other bits and bobs for my trampoline. When I'm ready to do that, I've got uh, these little hooks and I'm going to bolt them through rather than screw them in. Got a lot of beefy washers as well and uh, little baby nylock nuts for the trampoline. Oops. I'll get everything cut up today and uh, I won't film it because you've seen enough drilling and cutting so Hopefully, in the next clip, you'll see me starting to put it together. taking everything off. I've put the sheaths on all the screwed rod. Um, I'm also going to put some wood underneath there, you'll see. And also this, well this will be this way up. This is where the back part of the engine sled will attach to. So one on each. Start your engines.
So that is literally all of my footage. <laughs> We're like 100% up to date. Uh, it was very, very time consuming, all the drilling and cutting and uh, and just fine tuning those uh, those first engine mount brackets. I've uh, organized to go and see just one engine um, so then I can get all the dimensions and hopefully I can uh, get that for a good price and then uh, stick it on and you know there's still so much work to do on those engine boxes still so much work to do on those beams so just yeah every day plugging away at it and just doing what i can so yeah thanks for watching the video you know if you got to this point then thanks so much like uh, i couldn't do this without you guys watching especially couldn't do it without you guys uh, with the coffee the paypal the patrons the super thanks on youtube uh, obviously this stuff uh, is not cheap and uh, yeah like the old saying goes there's no such thing as a cheap boat and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much that i've actually spent on the boat but uh, you guys are helping so much so thank you very very much uh, i almost i also uh, managed to snag myself a pair of waterproof shoes <laughs> so that i can work when it's a little bit rainy the only problem is i can't work with wood when it's rainy uh, but the steel is uh, not as much of a problem anyway Thank you so much again and uh, see you next week and hopefully I can get some work done and get some footage uh, so that I can get a video for you next week. Uh, I'm sure I'll be able to. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for the third time. But yeah, see you later. Bye bye.